here to talk to you today about the IT skills crisis. Now, I have a teenager, and he thought this title was too dramatic. And <laughs> he is very dramatic. But I don't think it's dramatic. The shortage is terrible. And it, the IT skills shortage has been going on for a long, long time. I started my career at a newspaper called PC Week. It's not around anymore. But I was covering the Microsoft beat for PC Week and PC Magazine back in 1989. And we were covering this exact issue then, that technology uh, CIOs were having a terrible problem getting the right people with the right skills into the right roles. And why? Because technology, obviously, you guys all know, it moves so fast. It moves faster than the enterprises are capable of training people on those skills. So it's, you know, not a new problem. And here's to drop a name. I am the author of Steve Wozniak's biography. You know Steve Wozniak, he's the co-founder of Apple. And he told me that in 1971 at HP, where he worked, there was still a skill shortage. They couldn't find enough people to uh, operate the software and fix the software required to build the calculators. So go figure. Uh, you know what I don't have? I don't have my switcher. Thank you. I was going to say, there we go. Thank you. There we go, moving on. What's different now? Why are we talking about the skills shortage now if it's not new? Because now it is raging. It is so much worse than it used to be. This is a cartoon I picked out of some magazine that was in my dentist office. Seriously, everybody now knows about the skills shortage, but what they get wrong is that this cartoon makes it seem like it's the interviewee with the problem when really it's the manager with the problem. Again, the problem is finding enough people with the right skills. Now, I work for IDC. This is a very big 60-year-old technology firm. And we have been tracking the skills shortage for a long time. Now, two years ago, we asked uh, more than 1,000 IT leaders all over the world, um, how are skill shortages impacting your business? And about 51% said they were starting to see problems with quality, problems with competitiveness, problems getting software and hardware out on time. Well, now that number, this is from data just a couple of months old, 70% of organizations are telling us that they're seeing product quality decline, overall competitiveness decline at, directly as a result of skill shortages. And that's why IDC is predicting that by 2026, that's just two more years, everybody, 90% of organizations globally are going to be directly impacted by the shortage. And we're calculating it out at about $6.5 trillion. And that cost is uh, a calculated cost of what happens when you miss hardware goals, or hardware ship dates, software ship dates. Uh, when quality declines, when competitiveness declines, uh, we're seeing that digital transformation on average is being slowed by five to 10 months. All these things cost money. We're even seeing revenue get hit. This data, also very new, it's about two months old, 70% of organizations told us that they're already experiencing revenue hits as a result of the skill shortage. In this case, uh, revenue uh, hits from five to 20%. All right, so what to do? You're at an enterprise, and what do you do? There's this giant skill shortage. Well, obviously, the first thing to know is, well, what skills are in demand? Who should we be hiring? What should we be training on? Uh, we ask this question every year also. We just took the top few skills here, but I have a list of like 600 skills or something. But security, ITSM, IT ops, all the data stuff, AI, of course, you're going to see that climbing. Cloud leadership skills, human skills like leadership, communication, collaboration, we're starting to see that get really high on this list. API integration and orchestration, these are the skills that enterprises are telling us right now matter most. And what is hardest to fill though, not just what's most in demand, but the skills, the roles that are hardest to fill are the ones in AI and the ones in data. So we're looking at data engineers, data architects, analysts, data scientists, AI and machine learning specialists, especially very hard to hire right now. Now, there is good news. And if there is good news, uh, 
I guess you could say a silver lining as a result of the pandemic, it's that training has gotten really good. Pre-pandemic, this was boring stuff. And, you know, you've got employees hating training because they go to some boring classroom event, they take this course, they take their test, they forget 70% of what they've learned in 30 days if they don't use it. That's real data. And most companies were telling us, IDC anyway, that IT training is the first thing to go, the first thing to go. So you got a dot-com crash, IT training, it's gone. You got a 2008 recession, same thing. Not so during the pandemic. Suddenly now we are seeing, you know, some great software out there, and companies are telling us that uh, skills investments are now the most enduring of all the investments they're going to make in 2023 and 2024, even more so than investments in automation or investments in cloud or investments in CX and customer experiences. They're saying that they're going to stick with their skills training and investments, and that's good news. So what more should enterprises do? Well, of course, you should increase your focus on internal skilling, upskilling, cross-skilling, reskilling, because you've got those people there, and hiring is expensive, of course. Finding those skills is difficult. Uh, digital adoption platforms do help a lot. We're seeing 33% of organizations starting to look at those. What's a, what's a digital adoption platform? It's like something like, uh, if you're familiar with uh, SAP Enable Now, I know Max Wessel's here, uh, WalkMe, Pendo, WhatFix, these are examples of products that provide like in-app training while people are actually in the flow of work and stuff, and that's very exciting. But companies still need to focus heavily on retention. Retention truly, truly is everything. This chart is kind of hard to read, so I'll help you with it. On average, I'll just do it this way, on average, worldwide CIOs and managers tell us that they lost 16% of the professionals that worked for them last year. And now their new hires, they've got 21% of people who are brand new hires. So, you know, of course, the great resignation is slowing a bit, but there's still a big challenge in terms of keeping people engaged, you know, really engaged with evocative, continuous learning programs. One thing that's interesting is that 45% of professionals told us that they were likely, very likely, or certain to change their jobs in three to six months. So you still have time. <laughs> you might be able to keep them. But you got to keep them with clear career paths. Uh, I don't have this slide, but I'll tell you, we ask them every year, what would keep you in your job? What would keep you from quitting? And, you know, over time, they always say money, you know, almost always. This year, no. This year, they said what would keep them is a clear career path. They want to know how their career will progress at companies if they do the learning, if they do the certifications required. They don't want to just sit there in a seat and waste a lot of time at that company. And that's what's so interesting, because now you can really offer employees this mix of different types of modalities. So here in this chart, if you look at the orange pieces of the pie chart, that indicates uh, e-learning, and you're seeing that grow heavily over the next few years. But what's interesting to me is the sky blue uh, one there on the left is 37% going up to 41%. That's virtually, virtually, <laughs> whoa, virtual instructor-led learning. Grabbing some water here. Do you guys mind if I get water? This is 34 years of speaking. I just stopped, drink, sorry. I was once giving a speech and I was so nervous, my shoe flew off into the front row. <laughs> that happened. And it was in an IBM event and the IBMer got up and handed me my shoe really politely. After that, I was never nervous at public speaking. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> back to the thing. Virtually led instructor led training is going to be very hot. It's growing rapidly. But what doesn't show up here is experiential learning. And that's what we're most excited about and really following. This is the lab based learning. This is putting people, uh, 
you know, literally in labs so that they can work and practice and reinforce them, their skills in a real life scenario, and that's very powerful. And you're gonna see coming out in the next few months, uh, for sure this year, major vendors releasing, uh, well, Microsoft is, I'll give you an example. Microsoft has already released one. It's called Who Hacked? It teaches uh, like DevSecOps professionals, like, you know, helps them practice. Uh, their skills in terms of, um, you know, securing Kubernetes containers and so on. But it was created by the guys who created Minecraft. And it's a first-person game, and you go around and, you, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that adds to that experience that all enterprises should really go to, which is providing an environment, a culture of continuous learning. What's going to help with that? I can't believe I've gone this long. We have eight minutes to go, and I haven't mentioned Gen AI yet. <laughs> but you weren't going to escape without hearing about Gen AI, because Gen AI, I think it's most relevant for training. It really, really can help enterprises to personalize courses, uh, cr gamify information, and to create personal learning programs uh, based on, it's okay, you don't have to duck. I, <laughs> personalized learning programs based on how they learn. So, for instance, I am an audio learner. I learn best audio from podcasts are great for me. Videos, I almost have to close my eyes because I, I learn by listening. Other people are visual. Other people still want to read. Some people need someone to show them. You can start personalizing those sorts of courses of learning once you get generative AI. So anyway, this data showed that 24% of global enterprise recently told us that generating personalized training programs will be one of the first ways that they use generative AI in terms of allowing for personal transformation. So here is the guidance <laughs> that we give people. Uh, for one thing, we want them to promote a culture of learning. The only reason the word inculcate is there is because it was a bet, and I just won $10. <laughs> inculcate just means promote a culture of learning. <laughs> to stay relevant, to stay competitive, organizations absolutely must find ways to constantly equip employees with the latest knowledge they need to stay relevant in their jobs, to gain mastery in their jobs. And so having a culture of learning that includes all of these things, different ways of learning, and buy-in from the top down, you have to evangelize. I'm jumping around here a little bit. You've got to evangelize and get the word out, especially to the C-suite, because when leaders actively support and participate in skills training programs, only that can set the stage for a truly agile and innovative and you know, fail-forward, future-ready workforce. They also need to buy in with their money <laughs> and their people, and without total resource and financial buy-in from the C-suite, you can't really put an initiative into place, and that should be the very first thing that you do. And when you've done that, you evangelize around the company and promote the value of training, the value of certifications. You create engaging and evocative ways for people to learn, and you're constantly putting that in front of them. And you're rewarding successes and rewarding learning and creating an environment where employees want to stay because they're becoming better humans. They're becoming better employees. They're becoming better at what they do, and they're becoming better largely because of you. And that creates the loyalty that you need to truly retain the workers you desperately need in a widening IT skills crisis. Oh, can we go back one? <laughs> Thank you very much. I forgot this, these two, and I still have five minutes. You got to assess the skill gaps. This is a terrible task. It's bloody, it's hard, it's manual. <laughs> I mean... I wish I could say, oh, there's a program and you can set it out there and figure out your skill gaps, but to truly understand what the gap is between the skills your company needs and the skills that your employees actually have, 
you have to assess these skill gaps, and some of it's manual. You're literally interviewing employees. You're asking employees to go online and take quizzes and assessments. You're following up on those issues. It's hard, but it must be done. It must be done. And you need to assess the gaps, not just for now, but also for next year, 18 months in the future. What's your AI uh, system going to look like in 12 months or 18 months? That's hard to predict. But you need to start to figure out what are the roles you're going to need so that you can figure out what are the skills you're going to need and how you're going to find the people with those skills and create a written detailed plan for how you're going to fill those gaps. And finally, and I mentioned this before, because this is really where the magic happens, you've got to align learner goals to organizational goals. You sit down with your employees and you say, hey, our company needs to be good at X, Y, and Z. These are the skills we need to get there. Here's how you can help us do that and join our adventure with us. This is what fires up employees. It's what fires them up to learning. And suddenly, learning isn't some boring, terrible thing, you know, that you barely remember what you did and it ripped you away from your job for three days last week and what really is the point. This is a new age in training. And uh, that really is the silver lining of all of this. It has been great to talk to you this morning. I want to tell you that if you need uh, data to go convince your C-suite about the value of training, I have that data. <laughs> you can email me. I'm gsmith at idc.com. But I have cool data. I have data that shows that uh, AI and hybrid multi-cloud teams, if they get just 35 hours of training, uh, they're able to hit 95% of career goals. I mean, I have data like that that you can show, and you should contact me. <laughs> and also, uh, I wrote a paper, an IDC paper, uh, that was sponsored by Pluralsight, and they're making it available to everybody at the conference. And you can take a look at that. Maybe I'll see you at the workshop later. And uh, sit back in your, your weird 50 seats. And, <laughs> and, and have a great time, everybody. Thanks very much. Yay! Yeah. 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 Yeah.